Hi everybody. This week you're asking yourself, well, do I have everything that I need? Now, there's a couple more things that I want to talk to you about, okay? These are things that are uh, under the category of you must have, and we're going to talk about those right now. Welcome everybody to my channel. I'm Jose. Thanks for coming back and uh, spending some time here. This is episode number eight. And this is actually the last installment for now about uh, the topic of must have items. These are items that when you go to the store and you're making your purchase and you're about to go home with the instrument, you're going to need to collect a few things along the way to make it uh, complete as far as getting started. Okay. In this episode, we're going to cover five more things uh, that will basically top off and end those must-have items. There are other items that we're going to talk about in other episodes that are uh, nice to have, not necessarily you gotta have them to start, but we're just going to finish off with that primary list today. And on that list, we're going to talk about cases. I've mentioned cases uh, in previous episode, and I wanted to go a little bit uh, in, in more depth in the importance of having a case. You gotta gotta have this case. Uh, do or die here, guys. Must have it. Uh, the second thing we're going to talk about is care products. You have to be able to take care of this thing, keep it clean, and we are going to talk very briefly about some of the things that I use um, that'll just give you an idea of where to start, okay? We're gonna talk about bass strings. There's really two kinds that are out there that I use. I now only use one kind, and so I will talk to you about what my recommendations are, and then you can take over from there on what you wanna do. I'm going to talk about one specific tool that you can buy that'll make your life so much easier when you are putting on new strings on your guitar. And then the very last thing that I'm going to talk about, uh, if you buy any kind of tool, unless you have one of these already, I highly recommend that you buy diagonal cutters. So let's get started. Item number one. I want to talk to you about cases. Got to have it. Some guitars actually come with a case, and more than likely what it's going to come with is a Tolex. It's made out of plywood and covered on the outside with a Tolex vinyl-like material. Um, these cases are fine. They're great. It's fantastic that some manufacturers actually uh, provide that in the cost of the guitar. Some of them, not so. They'll charge you extra. In other words, you'll have the price for the bass guitar, and then the case is not included. And so if you want to buy the cheapest uh, case for that base, it carries a certain extra price on top of that. And Tolex is, uh, as far as the least expensive of the hard shell cases, you can always go with a gig bag, and that's perfectly fine. Um, I recommend, though, that if you're going to be transporting your guitar from one location to the other, and you're going to be transporting it in conjunction with other equipment, probably a hard shell case of some kind is probably best. If you're just transporting your bass guitar by itself in your vehicle, a gig bag is totally uh, suitable for that. It is padded. Most of them are padded. They are the most affordable protection for your instrument, um, but definitely if you're going to be doing a lot of moving around uh, from gig to gig, once you get to that level, you're going to want to invest in a hard shell case. Hard shell cases, uh, for m my experience, I have have three of them, three different kinds. SKB, and of course, these are not in any kind of order as to best to worst. They're just different manufacturers. Like my jazz bass that I bought did not come with a case. It comes with an awesome price for the guitar, but not a case. So I went and got an SKB because the one that they make uh, is molded to fit that body style uh, along with other um, very popular body shapes and I really like that hard ABS plastic that SKBs are made of but they're not the only ones that do that. Gator makes a really nice hard shell case made out of that high impact ABS plastic and um, I have rock cases for my Rickenbacker 4003. Um, the original case that that guitar came with basically disintegrated and to replace it with another Rickenbacker case it would have cost like $350. Nah, I went and got a nice 
hard shell case from rock cases okay and that one is really really nice um, I'm very confident in that case that it will protect my instrument and I'm thrilled with it okay number two we're gonna talk about care products okay you got to have this stuff you got to be able to clean your instrument it's important to have a clean instrument nobody likes to see an instrument that's got like barbecue sauce all over you hear, you hear me use that joke a lot I've seen it. I've seen where I look at an instrument and it looks like somebody poured barbecue sauce all over. It's just nasty. Uh, plus, if you play anywhere, you play with your friends or you play in a band, you're going to perspire and just coming into physical contact, you're going to smudge it all up. I really have two kinds of guitar polish. I have the Gibson brand that you see back there and I have a close-up of it. And then I also have the... Uh, you heard me say in a previous video that I like Dunlop products and DiMarzio products, but here's Dunlop. Those are the two that I use, okay? I've used a bunch of them. I like them all, but these seem to do exactly what I want them to do for not a whole lot of money. Another thing that you're going to want to get is in your cleaning uh, apparatus is really nice polishing cloth. This is microfiber, okay? You can buy these at the, the music store if you want to. You don't have to. You can get this at a home improvement or just anybody that sells cleaning supplies. You do not want to uh, touch your instrument with anything other than a microfiber, okay? These are uh, just, a, they're a godsend for keeping your guitar looking new for years and years and years and years. It won't damage the finish and scratch. I've seen people clean their guitars with a t-shirt. No. I've seen them do <laughs> paper towels. It's not gonna, yeah, use microfiber, okay? The next thing you're gonna want to get, okay, and this is a, a, a crucial in the must-have category, are bass strings. There are primarily two kinds that are out there that you're gonna want to explore. You can either get, and there's really two flavors, I, I, I call them two flavors. There's the nickel blend. These are strings that are primarily made of nickel wire and uh, those are really affordable and then there's stainless steel okay i've used them both i like them both they both have their negatives and positives the positive about nickel is that it's affordable right the negative about nickel wound strings are that they don't last very long because they're a softer metal and they do lose their tonal characteristics over a very short period of time you put them on, they sound fantastic. I solved that problem by using stainless steel. That is my preferred flavor of string. I love stainless steel simply because they last a really long time. They're very rugged. They're a little bit um, more expensive. That is the negative. The other negative about stainless steel is that because they are stainless steel and they make contact with your frets, it, it increases the fret wear, okay? something to think about not a big deal um, but those are the pluses and negatives between those two flavors of strings the string brand it runs the gamut i mean the, everybody out there makes their version of a suitable bass string set for your instrument you will have to try them out okay a lot of these things for me were always cost driven so what's the most affordable then what's the most reliable and what lasts long? So that's the reason why I use the brands that I use. There's no right or wrong. Just choose a bass string, stick with it. If you can experiment with different brands, go right ahead. The last two items on the list for four and five are basically tools, tools that are gonna make your life really easy. And on number four, I wanna talk to you about peg winders. Peg winders are a godsend when you're working on your instrument as far as either taking off a bass string or putting a new one on because without this, you're doing this by hand, okay? And the ratio, however many times you gotta twist to get one turn, complete turn on a bass tuner is, you know, it's, it is what it is. This just makes it easier. It's easier to do this <laughs> or act more accurately this than to do this repeatedly. It gets old, gets old. Get a peg winder, they're not that expensive. And I just love them. This one is for bass, obviously, because it can handle the, the larger uh, tuning key on there. 
And then this one is for a regular guitar, but I just love peg winders. Get a peg winder, must have. In my opinion, must have. And last, number five, if you buy any tools, okay? A tool that all bass players should have, and trust me, if you have one of these, and no one else in the band that plays guitar has one, you're gonna be their hero, okay? Diagonal cutters, why? Because bass strings, they come in full scale length if you have just a, a regular full scale guitar, right? So the strings are actually, when you take them out of the package, they're gonna be longer than where they end up from the bridge all the way to the tuning machine. They're actually gonna be longer. So when you thread that thing through, if you don't cut the end of it to trim that length, you're gonna have all of this spaghetti nightmare um, hazard, eye poking hazard sticking out and it looks ugly. And so diagonal cutters are perfectly suitable to cutting that kind of wire and doing it cleanly and you want that. On our next video, I'm gonna talk about things that aren't necessarily that you must have. Okay, that's what we talked about in these last three videos. These are must have items. The next video, I'm gonna talk about things that would be uh, helpful to have. It's not do or die, but these are things that you probably want to consider getting at some point in the near future, okay? So I tell you what, if you like what you see here and you have uh, any kind of questions or comments or whatever, go ahead and feel free to leave those below. Also, if you like what you see on this channel, it's beneficial to you, uh, go ahead and subscribe, right? And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way when I upload a brand new video here, you are notified of that. That way you can come back and check out the latest information on this topic, all right? And so also, if you want to follow me on Instagram, there is the address, okay? That's where I am on Instagram. And basically that's there to um, allow you to follow me on other aspects of my life while I'm in between shooting these videos and providing them for you, okay? Also, if you like this video, go ahead and give a thumbs up, all right? I really would appreciate a thumbs up. It allows me to become a better uh, content provider for you. That's it for this week, everybody, all right? And have a awesome week. Be productive out there and create something uh, musically. And I, I, at some point in this, I would love to hear what you guys are doing with your brand new instrument. Um, I'm really into that sort of thing. And so you can check some of my other videos on this channel of what I do with the bass guitar, all right? And so, alrighty, there you have it. Remember, tune it or die.